Alright All right, guys, what's up, what's up? Welcome to episode 55 of Unfiltered. I'm your host, Jamie MV. Joining me today is my co-host each and every week, Destiny. And we got two guests today. Oh, actually, I have them switched. Shit. I've got Red Eye and Cody Connors on today. And it's just Red Eye, man. Red Eye fucks me up every single Jesus week, Jesus Christ, Chris. You fuck me every, up all the time. Every show I come on. I, seriously, man. Get your like, shit together. Fuck. Fuck. So, uh, but yeah, we have a Red Eye on here and Cody Connors. And those of you wondering, I know you guys have been asking like crazy in the, the Reddit thread where Richard is. Uh, Richard is not here because of certain very good reasons, guys. So stop giving him fucking shit about not being on the show because he wants to be on the show. And there are very, very good reasons why he's not on the show. And uh, he will be on the show once he can be on the show. So and quit asking those damn questions and giving him shit because he doesn't deserve that shit. Okay, so that's enough of that. Uh, what we're going to go over today, guys, is we're going to be going over some upcoming events like Home Story, uh, Shoutcraft Invitational, and lots of WCS stuff with Paul, but I think we're going to save the WCS for next week. Uh, yeah, talk about me next week when I'm not here. Exactly. That's, that's what we do, man. That's exactly what we do. <laughs> no, but we're going to be talking about ESGN, of course. I think everybody's been talking about that uh, today. Lots of other things like CLG leaving Azubu, uh, the League of Legends NIP team with Mythian and Nuke Duck, all the drama there. Uh, Azubu closing in three months. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> it's going to happen. Yeah. Taking Maybe. bets now. Uh, and then, the, of course, the international prize update, like which our weekly update, basically, of the international prize pool. So there's lots of sick Dota news, man. Yeah, yeah. lots of yeah, exactly. Cody's going to be leading the, the Dota two part here today, so uh, lots of good stuff. And yes, I am feeling under the weather, guys. My my uh, voice obviously sounds a little different, but there's too much shit to talk about today, so had to do the show. Definitely had to do the show, <laughs> given uh, just uh, again all the topics. So excuse me if uh, you know I. My voice sounds different, or I cough every once in a while. I try to mute as much as I can. But, uh, yeah, should be good. So let's kick things off. Upcoming events. So Home Story Cup. Uh, Home Story Cup takes doing another one. Looks pretty good. I mean, I, have you guys taken a look at the event? $10,000 first place. Pretty much what you expect from Home Story these days. Nothing new. Oh, I'm going to be there. You're going to be there? Yeah. Wait, what? What? Where? Yeah, I'm doing a lot of tomorrow? casting work for the take. Yeah, I leave tomorrow. Oh, yes. you're casting for it. Okay, great. Hopefully. I actually... Well, God so I, damn, I, Steven. I left my passport at Katz's house, and I planned on picking it up if I was going to go back and do another MLG casting thing, oh but I ended up God, not doing any. Dude. So I'm getting it overnighted to me. Hopefully the passport gets here before... Dude, I hope Dennis ain't listening <laughs> to this. He's probably shitting his pants. Like, Fingers what the God. fuck? Oh, shit. Otherwise, I, actually, I mean, I like... If I oh shave really God. well, I think that I could probably pull off Nathan's passport. Like maybe oh my God. <laughs> maybe wax my you have face. A beard? Yeah. No, no. I would have to. I would have to go completely. Okay. It's a real shame. I usually <clears throat> pop over to to the the, mics, uh, man. to the home story cup, but unfortunately, I'm not flying in until Sunday afternoon, so I don't think I'm going to get there in time. Yeah. No. I actually checked your schedule first before I accepted this one. Okay. Yeah, the reason I'm going this time. <laughs> okay. You're such a cop. Uh, no, those I'm just kidding. Are always awesome. Um, I, those are one of my favorite yeah uh starcraft i i wish i could go to home story cup so so badly it seems just like a blast uh red red just tweeted that he thought it was going to be the best for whatever reason he can feel it in his bones that he thinks this one is going to be this the is going to be the best home story ever wow who's casting he, besides you steven who isn't um, casting that's how home story cups tend well to go. i mean yeah excluding players right like who are the actual We're really casting? bad roddy? i don't know is roddy gonna be there I, Rod don't even know I feel like roddy is like the you know, that, that's the guy I think about that's anchoring the, the casting. Yeah, Rod Roddy's about. actually part of the furniture, so. <laughs> Wait, Tennis has anything been announced or, or whatever? Home Story? It's, it's like this blow, weekend. We just how, blow could takes it, announcement? how could it not be this? How could it not be announced? It's like this weekend. No, I meant like in terms of like who was casting or whatever. Oh. I wrote on the, like, this Everyone casts anyway at Home Story Cup. Well, I I'm even just... hosted it once. Yeah? Oh, I don't even remember yeah. that. Shit. I just turned up in the morning, and, and Dennis says to me, hey, do you want to open yeah. the show? And I'm like, oh, uh, uh, well, I, you know, I've only got a t-shirt. He's like, yeah, it'd be great. Just go down to the bar and open up. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. That's how, and that's how it is. It's cool. It's a very, very cool uh, very cool event. Looking at the player well, list fun. here. Okay, wait. Jeff's playing in this? 
Oh my god. I mean, playing in the house. He always he plays. Can do both. Yeah. Does he? I don't know. I didn't remember. Yeah, anyway. Okay, okay. okay so yeah. there. There's one of the casters. I'm right looking there. forward to the Todd versus In Control <laughs> show match. Oh, <laughs> such. There's going to be a show match. Are there any. I'd, but I'd love to see Todd playing. Oh, control. come on, man. That, that would be very funny. Two, I'm expecting. Two of, my, two of my good friends playing each other. I'm expecting Fun. DTs in that one. That's for yeah. sure. And they would be probably Jeffs, but. Uh, yeah. Look at those Zergs, though, man. That's a, that's a nasty Zerg lineup right there. <laughs> Why are there so many Protoss? What the fuck? I know. That's what I was saying, too. It's like there's. There's well, as many Protoss as there are Protoss. Zerg and no, you, only need, you only need half as many Protoss in the tournament to win it, so it's it's fine. <laughs> I guess there are a lot of um, qualified Zergs, so I guess it balances out. Mm, yeah, I guess so. Still still a lot of Protoss, though. There's a couple but it should of be good. in there as well. Who? It's quite nice. Huh? Do you think the Muslim's going to make it? <laughs> Sorry. Well, Stefano's playing. Come on, that's old. Okay. When's the last time Ben hasn't made it a bit, dude? What? That's an old joke, right? That's an old joke? Didn't it, like, the last time you played and you had, like, a keyboard issue or something? Like, literally, like, within, like, two or three months ago? <sighs> Speak to Cody about it. Cody, you know, Cody's an expert in, 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 ben. I think, in uh, Benology. Just... Ben issues. Yeah, me and Ben are close. Any, anyway, I, I heard they're going to change the name of the cup anyway now. To what? It's going to be called uh, Liquid Story Cup. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Yeah. Well, they have Liquid five. Story. They have six. Six guys. Six, six guys. guys going. Again, Six guys. and they win it every time. So you know, and right. Snoop has some sort of weird record where I think every time he's played at Dennis's place, he's won a tournament, almost anyway. That's true. I think it's he's insane. got two. He's got two out of the last three, right? Home stories. Something like that, yeah. And yeah, a, well, he so. got a seat story as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, seat story. He won two in a row. Golly, man. Yeah. That's now tough. we we need the Euros or the non Koreans to step up because yeah. you know, December two thousand and twelve, Snoop, the last time anyone other than a Korean won. A premier tournament, dude. Snoo was on fire this weekend. He uh, was at on I, fire um, this weekend. Yeah. Like the qualifier. Oh my god, that was like an amazing run he had after losing the first four, round. Four Koreans in a run. I don't think I mm -hmm. remember a single tournament for many, many years that uh, a European won four consecutive matches against Koreans to actually, you know, win something. Well, kind of win something. He won a place, obviously. Yeah, no, his, his EVT actually looks better than than I've seen recently. So. I think he's been working on it some, so it's really, really good. He played some really good games against Chachi and uh, God, who else? Who did he play? Chachi and somebody else. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, first as well. First, which he yeah, lost first. against the first time round. Yeah, he and beat him the second time round. Yeah. Second, second that, time. Actually, yeah. first was yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but that last game, yeah, this last series. If you guys didn't catch it, he pulled out Swarmos, but he came back. You used Swarmos against Protoss. So it was definitely good stuff. <laughs> definitely good stuff. Uh, MC and Yoda with the other two. And what's funny is he beat MC, Yoda, and First, who were all playing out of the same house. Oh, really? You'd, you'd have thought they'd have talked to each other, wouldn't you? Oh, well. <laughs> I guess. Maybe they didn't have enough time to, man. <laughs> but anyways, uh, check out Home Story Cups. Always a great, great event. It is definitely one of the darlings in the StarCraft II community, just from the standpoint of, of uh, events. And, and Take does an awesome job of organizing it. And congrats to him. He got a Razor sponsorship recently, too. So... Cool Congratulations! Deal. I hope it was a real sponsorship and not a gear thing. I don't think he would have ever accepted. No gear way thing, he accepted no, a gear he's, thing. Come he's on, been Razor is fucking notorious for that. Oh my god, this ain't a streamer, man. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, next up, we've got this weekend. Also, is uh, Total Biscuits event, the Shoutcraft Invitational. Uh, again, it's a ten thousand dollar prize pool, and it's got eight players. And he finished announcing the last player uh, this past week, which was Zest. So we got Flash Life Hero, uh, Dongregu Hero, Innovation Zest, and it's Byung. It's, it's Byung, right? Is that right? Byung, yeah. Yeah, Byung. Um, that's pretty good, man. That's a pretty good lineup right there. Yep. Yeah, and he just wrapped up surgery this week and yesterday. Know. Like, what a... Give it he's up a baller, dog, man. That's fucking... Yeah, no, he's, he's just doing, he's he's doing co-op right now. He's doing he's an absolute animal. He really is. He's doing his podcast right now too, man. He's crazy. He's such an animal. Crazy dog. But it's <clears> going to be uh, casted by Total Biscuit and Artosis. There's going to be a Korean stream and a Chinese stream apparently. So, or I think so. yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a caster for each one of them. So I think there's going to be a stream dedicated to this. This weekend, right? Yeah, it's this weekend too. So lots of stuff going on this weekend. Check that the out X too. Games, bros. Don't forget about the X Games. The X Games. Yeah. Oh. Man. Smash Call of Duty players oh, Call of Duty, playing, Call of Duty, yeah. playing at the X Games, man. That's right. Kick flips and, I mean, like, when when MLG announced that, like, they had to 
know the 360 no scope joke was like gonna go through the roof. Like it was a perfect match. I think the 360 no scope joke is why they they got the X Games all together. So that should be sick. I mean, I know. What's the 360? Like, what? You don't know about 360 <laughs> no scope? Do you even? Oh, no, no. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I was just like, what the fuck? He, he, okay. he doesn't. He doesn't call a duty code. I'm just like, man, English. Okay, got it. Got it. So that'll be interesting to say the least. It's in the X Games. For those of you that don't know what he's talking about, it's actually in the X Games Call of Duty, which is kind of a big deal. I don't know, Paul. What do you think of that? What do you think about it, Call it's of Duty? Good. I mean, you know, it's geeky and it's uh, you know it's a bit weird, but at the same time, it's just more exposure for esports. I don't think we should knock it. I think it should be mm. all right. No, it's great, man. I fucking love the X Games too. So, uh, what about um? Why, yeah, why, I mean, it beats the World like... Scrabble Championship, right? And they televise <laughs> that shit, dude. Look at Sean White, man. He's, he's made a giant, giant career out of the X Games. Isn't there, like, a big tournament every year? I might be completely making this up, but isn't there, like, a big tournament every year for, like, fucking the newest, like, Madden game? Doesn't that happen, like, yearly? Or am I yeah, completely... The Madden right? Challenge? Uh, the Madden well, last Challenge. Year, wasn't it Virgin did it, did it last year? Yeah, it was Virgin Gaming. <laughs> yeah, Virgin Gaming did it last year in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, man. They've been doing it for years. Bucks. I mean, I, I, I yeah. competed in two of them, I think. Yeah, like oh, a long time Madden player, a, a long, a long yeah, time, a, gamer. a long time ago. I mean, they had they had regional qualifiers like in every city. It was it was actually pretty cool. Did you have a show for? No, I didn't have a show Madden? for Madden, man. I could jetpack with the best of them, though, man. Two thousand seven. What, uh, what would you have named the show if you had to have a Touchdown Town? Touchdown Town. Touchdown Town. <laughs> oh my so god. Sick. TD Town, baby. <laughs> yes. That's legit. Good job, Steven. Good oh, job. Oh man, you're so quick, dude. So quick. Thanks, dog. Okay, try. No, I, th I thought they had stopped doing it for a while, but they started to back up because that was actually a really well-run event, that, that whole Madden challenge back in the day. And they'd have a culminate in Vegas every year. Because they had an NBA Live. I, I did the NBA 2K. Um, I made the finals of the NBA 2K 8 or 9, but it wasn't like it wasn't a big deal. It was just like an online thing. And if you were like top 22 on the ladder, you'd, you'd qualify for it kind of thing. But... Madden was a big deal. Like they have local qualifiers at every single mall. North America? Yeah, in North America. North America. Oh man, it's crazy. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. So I think I think I think they still have those things, which is really cool. They had those TV shows at least. I'm in the sports games too, man. So as you can tell, at least I used to be really really big in the sports games. Well, All right. Any other events going on this weekend? There's uh the summit which I was going to talk about in the Dota segment, but it's actually really interesting. Okay. It has been likened to the home store of Dota, even though I think they're trying to distance themselves from being so closely compared to it. Uh, I'm doing an interview with these folks, and it should be up in the next uh, day or so, but it's, yeah, it's the folks from Beyond the Summit. Uh, that was a crowdfunded studio in Southern yep. California. They got Navi uh, down there, Evil Geniuses, NAR. Uh, so that should be a really cool event. And uh, again, it's supposed to be a little different from Home Story Cup, but everything I hear just keeps... Uh, everyone I talk to, they always so like sick. it to one another. So, yeah. So, it'll be yeah. interesting. I think that'll be really cool. All right. So, good stuff. Some stuff for uh, everybody, really. It's Dota 2, Star of 2. WCS round of 16, D Monday to Thursday next week. Yep. Oh, who cares about it? No. Just kidding. <laughs> WCS. You all really should care too. about it as well. There's just so joking. many ridiculous groups. Actually, the Thaddeus was... Uh, tweeting me like how much it would take to, to for us to change the time of this. I'm like, yeah. I've been I scheduled and filtered to be right between you you're guys. Stealing, you're stealing viewers, I've been trying Chad to be man. right between you guys. I, I mean you got you guys are the ones that are like <laughs> fucking bookending us and I'm just like, oh shit man. I'm just we're just like bouncing well, left and right. We'll, we'll give you a shout out next week. Yeah, okay, thanks man. Appreciate it. Alright, All right, so let's move on. And let's just jump to the one of the main courses here, which Ooh, is Ooh baby. <laughs> Ooh baby. ESGN. All right, so lots of been going on here. Um, kind of started out the week, or at least the weekend, maybe the end of the weekend, with a uh, an article on on gamers from Slasher, talking about um, basically ESGN apologizing. Here, I'll show it to you real quick. ESGN apologizing says all the debts will be paid by June, and you know he got you're some. Fucked in, you're fucking it all up, channel man. Why am I fucking it? Chronological <laughs> order. We got to start. Oh with... God. All right. Okay. All right. We got to start so... with. All right. You, you you take it, just take it. Oh, I've been I've been following this like uh yeah, I got hawk. like a hawk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we start with sick article from fresh faced journalist Joe Innerzone Edwards. <laughs> oh shit. 
on on gamers. So before people are going to be oh paid God, me what they are supposed to be paid, first they got to not be paid, right? So this article breaks on May 28th from this spry whippersnapper who still has yet to be identified, uh, Joe Interzone Edwards. Um, and he just basically, you know, he throws it down. He has a bunch of leaked emails from staff, uh, from upper management that is just like, you know, maybe next week, maybe the week after, um, you guys will be paid. Um, if you guys are having problems feeding yourselves, I don't know if I can figure it out, but the money should come. Wow. Um, and then there are some StarCraft players who chime in and say things like, I accept that my money is gone. So that's where it starts. Before they can promise to pay people the money that they haven't paid them, they have to not pay them. So we got to start at the beginning. Um, <laughs> okay. And that is from, again, uh, Joe Interzone. Link Edwards. me the article again. I'm going to link it to them. I'm okay, to link right it now. to them because... The big Joe it. Edwards yeah. deserves all the attention he should yeah. get for his, uh, I mean, this guy's freshman attempt at esports journalism, and he fucking kills it. I've never seen this much promise from someone so green. All right, you're talking about this article. Like, let me link it to you guys first. Are you, are you suggesting this may have been ghostwritten? No. Oh. I I never said that. All right, so this I'm is this is the article that he's talking interesting. about. Interesting. Yeah, so this article goes in. Uh, <laughs> if you guys haven't checked it out, let me check it out. Kind of goes in uh, exactly what Cody was saying. Talks about at least what was going on at the time, or at least what, what just the first inklings of what was been going on with ESGN and financial difficulties and that sort of thing. I think a lot of rumors have been swirling around that some of the employees hadn't been paid for months, and then that's kind of when this article kind of kicked in. But then, Mister. Uh, Mr. Breslau here ended up doing some of his own ESGN uh, investigating, and he actually had two articles come out this past weekend. One talking about the cancellation of uh, the twenty-five thousand dollar Hearthstone Champions, I guess, event that they've been planning for quite some time now. And actually, I, uh, Frodan had asked me to potentially cast it too at one point, but had to spend like weeks or whatever in Berlin, so there's no way I could do that. So I know they were working really hard to get this going, and it was supposed to like launch this past week or this week, coming week or next week or something like that so yeah so they announced they had to cancel that um at the same time uh, I, I either i might have gotten the articles actually backwards but then it's, uh, another article came out basically saying that ESPN apologizes for um basically all the debts and they'll be paid by the end of june and i think a lot there's a lot of quotes here by some of the players that haven't been paid and and uh you can kind of get the background of that too yeah they talked to grubby yeah um it's, it was interesting. Grubby went as far to, I think, say that they they would sort of be uh, vindicated, I think was the word he uses, if they paid the players, which I <laughs> think is maybe appropriate from a player point of view, but I still think it is pretty fucked if you have people working there full time. So presumably 40 hours a week not being paid. That's absolutely insane. Yeah, well, I and think... I think Joe Interzone Edwards... I think that's one of... I think with that statement, agree. that's one of those things you say, like, in desperation... Like if somebody's holding you hostage or whatever, and you're like, I promise I won't tell anybody. Please, just let me go. Please, like I won't, I won't be mad at that's all. Like true. just don't that's kill true. me, you know. Oh man, well I mean Grubby has obviously been in esports for a long time, so I think he's become, I don't know, uh, accustomed to these type of companies not I, paying on time. I think doubling back to them giving, it's really curious to me that they gave a statement to on gamers who have been just reporting on them just shitting the bed for the last week instead of just publishing it themselves it's like this crazy esports stockholm something like why does why yes because it was also really weird too is like uh tort did the like the worst thing you can do to a writer or a writer rather and they're just fucking notoriously lazy myself included the worst thing you can do is publicly give a deadline to someone and and he did it sort of loosely he used the word shortly and then the article came out the next day and, and Rod punched in a bunch of quotes and had done his research, but like everyone was waiting. Why didn't you just publish the statement on your own fucking website? Why didn't you do that? You know what I, I mean? I could be wrong, but I'm willing to bet that there's probably not too much loyalty left in those employees. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that that's, would be my yeah, guess. That's... Well, is there a PR person there? If, I mean, you, would, if you would have it's... come to me like two years ago for like information about owned, I probably would have given you all sorts of shit regardless. <laughs> you know, like I, I doubt that very many people left at that place are, are very loyal to the company anymore. Um, Rod just tweeted three minutes ago. I don't know if this is also three minutes ago. Apparently ESG had just cut 20 employees. I don't know who's included in that, but... 
Yeah, I mean, well, but okay, it, so... he's also also tweeted that they're going to continue on for whatever uh, that means. I, uh, I don't believe yeah, that without any stuff or. Well, okay, so getting on to the article that was released today by our, our buddy Richard Lewis. Indeed. Ooh. It's ESGN Studios to close, staff contracts it's contracts terminated. And yeah. this article here, I think there's been some debate, at least with Tort on, on Twitter, where I, I think he's confirmed that the studio is definitely closed, but I think some of the things maybe in this article have not been uh, confirmed or not. You know, I think there's some talk about uh, access being denied or uh, studio being locked and that sort of thing. So I think maybe there's some some kind of, some kind of conflict between that, you know, just with Tort and, and Richard you know on that. Who could get the story right, though? Who? And who I'm counting on? Joe Innerzone <laughs> Edwards. I think could maybe take a look at it and it, it's almost pull it like all together. They've got, you know, because oh, like man. Stephen said earlier on, you know, what they should have been doing was releasing this themselves and controlling the story. It's the first rule of PR, control yeah. the story. Um but maybe they are. Maybe they have an exclusive deal on shit news with with on gamers, and that's, that's why they're upset. That's they actually, have media. Or that's what that if? Oh that's my fucking possible. god! What if the ESGN model for business is to split ad revenue with on gamers and and <laughs> what, to fucking profit off yeah, the ad pay, revenue? Yeah, pay for all those fight nights. Yeah, man. Holy like shit, all all of we... all of Sla oh, Imagine that all of Slasher's articles are paying for white raw and grubby's prices. The real conspiracy now. <laughs> We've they done do it, some boys. Stuff, crazy shit. The story oh gets God. picked up by like CNN or like the BBC or some shit. Millions of fucking hits on the page, tens of millions. All of a sudden, you know, the hundreds of thousands of dollars of ad revenue are pouring in, and ESGN is in the green again because of their backstore bargainings with uh, our gamers. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's an interesting uh, assessment, though, uh, Paul or Red Eye. Yeah, well, because I mean, I they were it. they were at the launch of the SGN, all gamers. You know, yeah. when Kim was but there. I, right, so. It was a joke, but on the other hand, I also <laughs> want to say that, it, clarify, you know, please. despite the fact that we're talking about all of this and, and we don't really, you know, none of us really know what the true stories are, it seems obvious now that ESGN have confirmed that they're going to have to get rid of 20 people, which, yeah. you know, is a real... How many people do they real, have? You know, 20, 20 people yeah, exactly. lost their job today, yeah. so I don't, I don't think we should necessarily um, be shitting on them either, but the well, point is that, you know, you, you can't, this is just another lesson in, in life's rich tapestry of esports investments that you just can't come in, spend whatever the fuck you like, and expect to be successful instantly. It's just not that kind of business. The funny thing is, though, they actually can. They're getting money from like a like a money laundry group. How do they run yeah. out of money? I really don't understand. No, the, 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 like, if it was a legitimate business, like, I mean, I could understand that. But fuck, like, they're, they're supposed to go fucking broke and waste a whole bunch of money. Isn't that the whole point of, like, money laundering is to find a way to, like, spend a bunch of money and get it to come back clean so that you can use it in other things? Like, what the fuck? The problem is, is that there are just not very good people running these companies. You know, people, like, the leadership... The, the leadership team, the management team, are just not the right people, and on so many of these. Uh, these and, I, and I would agree with you, Chris. I think yeah, it, it, it's you like, know, you're right. For me, it's more about like you know you've got this top, you've got this massive amount. Of, I was talking to someone at AES. I won't tell you who, but I think you probably work it out anyway. But <laughs> we were talking about this internally at ESL with a couple of us earlier today, and and the point that we were talking about was that you know if someone came to us and gave us twenty million dollars. We would just be, you know, like, oh my God, what, think of all the things we can do with this. Right. But we'd be frugal and we would use it in such a way that was, you know, made business sense. In other words, we wouldn't go out and spend 100 grand on a launch for it. We would, you know, we'd want to spend that 100 grand on cameras and lights and God knows what else that we would want. But we would also do it in such a way, and we have done it in such a way, and that's why we are at least breaking even or making a small profit, is that you can't just buy shit and expect it to pay for itself. It has to have a business model behind it. And I and I don't know what ESGN's business model was or, or is. I and yeah. getting rid of people now it, it just seems like firefighting to me. I don't know how they come back from this. I hope they do because a we need the competition in esports, and I'm really truthfully honest about that. It drives everyone on. And secondly, there was a lot of good people that have lost their jobs. And yeah, I mean, the, the, you know, what people don't understand is that I think a lot of the staff that actually went over there are some really talented people. Yeah. You know I mean, and these some of these people moved there, you know, from from the U.S. or from North America. Yep. Yeah. This is this is change of lifestyles. This yeah. isn't just you know oh, I've just yeah. taken a job in esports just to get by. This is you know people have have put their careers on hold and completely changed their careers, changed their lifestyles, left their family behind, uh, moved across two continents. You know, this is this is real life, and that's you know I think it's very sad that these people are now 
uh, now suffering because of because of poor judgment. And and as Chris pointed out earlier on, for me, the biggest issue has always been with investment in esports, where there's a large amount of money put into it. Has always been that the top people that are somehow able to persuade these people to put this money in know fuck all about esports, yeah. and it really pisses me off because if they did know just a little bit more about esports, they would know that they can't do it like this. There are so many, you know, there's like a freaking graveyard of companies that have done this now and it hasn't worked. Why the fuck aren't you learning? That, I did. I asked that same question. I wanted to know, like, yeah. who do I have to talk to? Like, where are the connections to just get, like, a fuck ton of money for free? Because, you know, the investors couldn't have, they did fuck off for research, right? Like, they're, like what reasonable investor in 2014 would dump that much money into something, like, revolving around startup? Like, you can't do it. And I mean, and I guess they do like a little bit of Hearthstone. It didn't just do, but oh, it's still, there was a little yeah. bit of Hearthstone, dude. It was a Hearthstone was a big part of that whole. Okay, industry. okay, sure, but but I mean, like regardless, like of all the shit that they did, like there was nothing like. What I want to know what plan I want to see like the meeting where the what Froden and whoever the fuck else took like their plan and was like this is what our plan is this is how much money we need and this is how we're gonna make this much money like what did that look like where they honestly could have swung the massive amount of fucking like initial investment in, into whatever the fuck into the fight nights and everything else to make it look like it was it was ever gonna be profitable you know I understand like oh you don't have to be profitable in the first year and all that shit like or even in the first three years like yeah sure yeah. like I've heard that and that's cool but like I mean it's obviously like it's so fucked now that not even you know like a year into things like everything is fucking falling apart and collapsing like well, what the fuck is going on like it just seems so like nothing makes sense you know i uh i'd like to echo uh those sentiments largely i from the absolute beginning of the project from the first broadcast i was uh, i was working at on gamers with the, at the time and we like watched that first broadcast and we were like what the fuck you know there was there is no business model the ad revenue was never going to pay for what they've done and and they really I saw no clear way that they were going to be able to monetize any other part of their project, right? So it just it looked like shit from the get-go. Like the the I the broadcast looked okay enough, but I mean like their my perception of their plan looked like it was just it was dog shit. It so was it was the, it was the wheel. Out. It was the girls in the wheels. Come on, just just just, just Yeah, that was going to that was going to revolutionize. There's these. never there was never a clear way, and like, how is this ever going to be profitable? It was never that. Like, it, it feels like I remember when Froden first fucking came on here to talk about the shit, and I remember mm -hmm. when we were asking him, and I was just like, how how are you guys like planning on making money? And like, all the answers he gave were so vague and like ridiculous, like preposterous. Like, oh well, we're gonna do advertising for DreamHack and and other companies. Like, what? Like, well, like it just like it didn't make any sense at all. Like, what? Like. I don't even know. Like it just, I'm gonna, it's so, well, it's hard. It's hard so to say. Fro, say fro, so Dan is, you know, obviously, he's kind of been the face of the studio just because he yeah, like kind the, of the like talented. the in control of EG. Almost yeah, but, for but, but the thing is, is Dan he he's not one of the the, the executives there. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, having him talk about some of the things, obviously, he's gonna have some knowledge of it, but not the entire knowledge of of exactly what I guess their business model is. So it's kind of unfair that to. Put it on him to explain everything that they're doing, you know, kind of thing, uh, from the standpoint of trying to make revenue and that sort of you know, that sort of bit. You have to be wary of this shit, though. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm venturing into asshole territory right now. I'm gonna pull up a Team Liquid blog okay. from last year, August oh, of boy, last here year. Here From our, uh, yeah, I read from our boy, this. our boy Tort. Oh, first, man. first sentence. It's here rare to find a company that you not only enjoy, but feel the link? goals and projects of the company align with your own expectations of the scene you've been so heavily involved in. And it's more of that rhetoric until the very end. The last sentence is, if yeah. things go south, then at least the at least I can look back at this. Ha ha. Where, so, where's where's I, this link? I'll just share it. I'll just share it. That was I I, yeah yeah you linked it earlier. Scary. My favorite sentence in all of that was, I knew this was a good company when like the company couldn't pay for my plane tickets and like one of the guys paid for it like out of his own pocket. <laughs> yeah, I'd be fucking worried at that point. <laughs> yeah, it's like what? That's like the biggest fucking red flag. When the guy's like, well, fuck, we can't pay. Like, I'll just, I'll cover it. Like, just put it on my credit card. Or like, yeah, okay. <clears throat> but again, it's it's thing. like, I, uh, you know, I definitely, I'm, it, it sucks I'm, as we're like, kind of like, fucking fun at this stuff. But again, it's like, yeah, I'm I mean, really, I, okay, I, so what, what I want to know, what I want to know is how people get, get just 
convinced of all this like, stuff, you know, because these, some, some of these guys have been at companies that have failed, so. Okay, okay, but, like, so, like, I agree, like, it's really sad that some people lose their jobs or whatever, blah, blah, blah. and I'm not shitting on the people that, like, went overseas. Even, I mean, like, if I was in the position, a lot of those people, if you were young, maybe just out of college or, or haven't finished college yet, and you got the opportunity to go overseas to something, it might fuck up, it might fail, like, yeah, fuck it, you're young, why the fuck not? You go over there, it fails, you come back, it sucks, maybe you got to live with your parents for a year or two, finish school, I mean, it kind of sucks, but, like, honestly, like, ten years from now, you'd probably kick yourself if that was, like, your only opportunity to leave the country and go overseas like even if it fell so whatever like i can understand that but if you're gonna make yourself like the face or something i feel like you have there has to be like a little bit of responsibility i don't necessarily agree with you when you say like oh well froden doesn't know all the business plans blah blah, blah. like i mean sure i mean maybe he didn't but like i know that for me personally like if i was gonna head like and be the face or something i would be damn sure to to, to, to try to have like some inkling of what's going on because i don't totally want right. to be associated yeah but i don't know i don't know if he fuck you know i don't Absolutely know if I'm not steven no, yeah, but no. Here's the thing. Like, I don't. I don't know if Dan. Like, I don't. I don't know if Dan. Like, knew he was going to be the face of this thing. No, it, it doesn't matter. It, it well, kinda... he did. I'm pretty yeah. sure he did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty. I'm pretty, pretty sure he sold on the idea that you know, hey, come and join us in Germany. We've got this fucking great big show. We're going to make you the the star of the show because let's face it. And I like Dan a lot, so this isn't a slow on him. But he was not the star at an ASL. He just wasn't. Sure. Okay. Yeah. But he goes over there. He gets an opportunity to be the lead man, if you like, in a big movie, and that's exactly what he's gone and done, right? But I agree with Stephen. When I joined ESL last year in January, one of the problems that ESL had before I joined was massive problems with prize payout. What do you think the first thing I talked to Ralph was? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. It was about prize payout because I said to him, I cannot work for a company that doesn't pay out the money to the players when I've been bitching about companies not paying out the players for years. And I just can't, I can't put on an ESL shirt and just be that guy that says, yeah, no problem, yeah, we'll find some money and we'll pay. And guess what? I got assurances that we would get it done, and it did get done. And I have been paying out since February of last year on time every single month. And that's important to me. It might not be part of my job. It might be not be something I do. But as a, as a face of ESL, it absolutely means a great deal to me. So, you know, Dan, if, I don't know if Dan was naive or not, but he, he should have gone into it with his eyes open, and he should have been absolutely clear on what he wanted to get out of this, how it was going to be funded, what the business model was before he moved over there. But I also, I think... Stephen's right as well. I hate the fact that he's fucking right all the time. Um, oh, most of the time. Um, in that, you know, you get an opportunity like this, fuck, you've got to go for it. Yeah, I mean, you it's, have, it's been great to. for him regardless. I mean, I, I think overall, but yeah. It's... I, don't think it's, I don't think it's hurt Dan at all. I mean, well, he, he's, Dan, he'll have maybe. learned a huge amount about it. He'll have learned more about the business. He'll have learned about hosting shows. He'll, I mean, it's all I added to his was... skill set. So I don't think he's... You know, it's still life, though. You know, I think I think it, like it, it the, the line level employees, the, the base level employees, probably won't be his hurt as much by it, depending on how much the income sucks. I mean, obviously you have to deal with that bullshit. But um, I I mean, in terms of Froden, though, I think that there is a little bit of damage done because now if he's the face of any new project, you have to wonder. Like, I mean, like Froden will have any fucking project. You know, that, I'm just like whether or not that's true or not. Like, that's the impression you'd get. You know, if another new project was announced. Like, say, like, another big project was announced and, and you take something like Day9 as the face of it. Like, it's probably got some shit behind it because Day9 doesn't sully his name, right? He only puts his name on shit yeah. that usually is pretty fucking good. But, like, if, if a new project comes out and Frodo's head of it, it's like, could they not find anybody else? Is this the kind of thing that only Frodo would take? Like, I, I do think that there's some damage there, well, which is why... I which is so. why. I think it depends what he gets involved in. I mean, if he gets in something that then fucks up again, then sure, it's starting to look pretty grim, isn't it? Because... You know, that's a bit of a habit. But I've I've done some shitty shitty programs in the past and come back from them, yeah, luckily. Sure. And, and I'm not saying that it's I think it does, but... No, no, but it, you're right. It does tarnish a little bit. But, yeah. you know, say I hire him for ESL. What does that do for him? Does that I suddenly mean, make him credible ESL again? Like... <laughs> I mean, I, I, don't, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm hiring him, but I'm just saying, if what, you know, if, what if I hired him and, and we brought him into ESL? Does, does that ruin ESL? Does that tarnish ESL in any way? No. no of does it help not. him? Maybe I don't know, but, but I'm it, just saying. I'm just saying in terms of Dan's ability to publicly be the face of another company, like on his own, not being in as as part of like another thing, but to be like the. Uh, I don't. Maybe uh, maybe I've got the wrong impression, but I feel like Froden was like a really big part of like the face, the public facing side of ESG, and it seemed like it was almost exclusively Froden, or it seemed like he was a huge part of it. it, it did anybody else get that impression? Was. Yeah, no, I did get the I did get a big impression that you know they were shaping everything they did around him, and that. No, no, you know, I don't think that was a bad thing, but I don't, I don't think that's his fault either. I mean, he even stopped doing their daily news show at the end, though. I think one of the good things that really helped, like, on accident, despite themselves, they did one thing well despite themselves. It was, uh, 
Frodan is like pretty closely affiliated with the Hearthstone scene now, which I think is good for oh, him. Yeah. You have a sort yeah, of it's been middle of the pack him. in Hearthstone or in StarCraft. And and Starcraft and the way Starcraft is being middle of the pack doesn't pay the bills. Yeah. Um so that was good. I mean it's probably pretty shitty, I guess, on the, the I mean like his his wallet's probably hurting, but um you know, he got really close with a lot of really uh important people who I think are gonna sort of like lead the the charge on Hearthstone, which I guess is good. I'm more worried about these people that just like uprooted themselves because they really had no other opportunities and they were really yeah. excited I about the production team. Yeah. Just we, like well, yeah, us. we've been told tonight it's like 20 people and it's mainly from the production team, or maybe mm -hmm. even all of the production team. In the latest On Gamers article, they said they they like cut the studio. My big question is like, what other business is there besides? I don't know. The that's studio? a good like, question. What, uh, I don't what know what the else fuck? they do. Like, I thought that's all they did. So yeah, um, so there's other things going on. I. Uh, there was uh, talk of a ranking system or something like that, but I don't think that Yeah, their happen. ESL points and weird shit like that. Ralph yeah. mentions that he's reevaluating. Uh, Ralph says he's going to wait to get in the On Gamers article. He says he's going to wait to see what happens and then sort of reevaluate the relationship. Because they had partnerships with ESL, with GOM. Yep. Um, and they're, I mean, the, the partnership with GOM apparently didn't help GOM do very much because they seem to be on their deathbed right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, they're. Another company not doing so hot right now. I don't think. Yeah, exactly. But... Um, I mean, you know, they. It looks like they both have cash flow problems, so they might be able to save some money on having a joint funeral with one, one another, and share a share a tombstone or something. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. So I don't know if uh, they'll recover from this, um, and if they recover, what they're gonna do with it. But um, it sounds at least like the studio is gonna be gone, and the studio was probably the one of the most impressive things about it it probably costs a fuckload to have it but... are we going to see a second auction <laughs> oh trucks too involved production trucks i hope there's a i hope there's a no second comment auction. i want the wheel man i want that wheel how much do you think the wheel is going to go for you think they're auctioning the girls with it <laughs> <laughs> god jesus christ i don't know like how you guys still do like that shit in europe i hear you guys do a lot of human trafficking but i don't know what it is like <laughs> whoa 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 blow 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 blow, blow bro Listen, man, I watched Taken 1 and Taken 2, okay? I know what it's like. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's probably all true then. Oh, man. Okay, well, let's move on from ESGN, and let's talk about CLG leaving Azubu. And Rip, Azubu is gone in three Twitch. months. And going See you later, right alligators. Now. See you later, alligators. Yeah, so, Azubu is 100% uh... gone in three months. They will not be here anymore. I know it. I feel it in my bones. So CLG's right. never been with Twitch, right? This is the first time they've ever been with Yep, Twitch. They right? hopped from owned to yeah, owned Azubu, to Azubu, right? Azubu. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember looking at seeing double if stream was it last night or the night before. It was sixty. Like, you no, know, it was like seven. It was seventy something. Yeah. Like, and they, uh, do you know what? When you the tune in, you listen to them. They're like kids in a candy store right now. Yeah, exactly. Loving life. Like, yeah. Well, these, it beats the hell out of a thousand commercial, viewers, which he was getting. Commercial, commercial, commercial. Yeah. Hmm. The real interesting thing, though, so that's that's the very surface of the issue, right? The news that they switched. A month ago on their website, it was like a month and two days from yesterday, Where they said, hey, you know, little press release, we've renewed our deal with the Zulu for 2014, we're, we're fucking doing it, we're doing it as a team, and then a month later they just switched to, how do you, how do you even do that, how is that a thing? You know, you know what it is, when they renewed the deal, I bet that they were behind in a lot of payments, and when it came time to do contract <laughs> oh, time, Azubu yeah. probably said, all right, listen up, like, we'll fucking do, like, a big cash incentive to keep you. They were happy with the number of the cash incentive, so then they posted, yay, we renewed our contract, we're happy, we'll get the money eventually, blah, 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 and then the months stick on, they didn't get shit, and I'm like, fuck this, time to jump ship. I bet that's what happened. Move to the, the <laughs> they renew their partnership. It's to your, it's to your right channel, man. Okay, let me see. That's just almost directly to the right from your cursor on my screen. Which would yeah. be right on your screen. Right here, part second, right here. second to last story in the sidebar. Loading it up. How yeah. wild. What a wild world we live in. And yeah, yeah that's two like weeks a, that's a... Um, one month, two weeks ago. Okay, six weeks yep. ago then. Down, 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 homie. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. The yeah second yeah. from the bottom. No, no, I've already pressed on it. Yeah, it's I did, okay, I did see a very funny tweet um, when, this, uh, when this all went down. Was it yesterday or the day before? I can't remember. It was yesterday. Yesterday, Jesus. Seems so long ago. Um, and it said, it said something about, you know, if, if this was a, if esports was a stock market, shares in CLG would have just got, gone through the roof. And I was <laughs> like, well, no, I think actually, if this was a stock market, shares in Twitch would have just gone through the roof. <laughs> That's... 
because they mm-hmm. they benefit from this much more than anyone else does. I mean, sure, CLG benefit from it, but it, you know, it's Twitch yeah. again. Twitch wins. I, I love shit on Twitch for because I'm so edgy or whatever, but I think that this is really <laughs> good for anybody that joins Twitch. Twitch, I think Twitch is a really back and forth relationship with a, with a streamer or people that stream with them. I mean, if they're gonna actually be getting paychecks and shit, like I mean, I think I think CLG is a really big one for them too. Undoubtedly, of course, it benefits Twitch, but. I mean, it's good for CLG. People can find them a lot easier yeah. now on Twitch, and <clears throat> getting paid is good. I mean, the real question is, what does this mean by Azubu? This was, I think, by far the biggest contract, you know, I guess. Oh, yeah. That had, be, that had to be their, one of their biggest accounts. Yeah, they got easily, if not the biggest. Like, Cody, yeah. can you not draw some parallels with this? <laughs> Just saying. I think, I think that... Chris knows I mean, what I'm talking about. <laughs> Isn't this exactly what happened before with Owned? Yes. Which is why it, I think it's awesome within, to have a month, on the show. They'd close down. The, 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 so when I view this... I've heard, this too, is like... that there are, some, there are some owed money, which is also the same sort of rumors we heard with Owned. Yeah. But, you know... When, when I look at this, this is one of those things where it's like, um, where it's like, can they function without CLG? Like, probably. But it's like if you have a person and your hand just falls off, like, it just, like, goes fucking necrotic or just falls off. Like, can you live without the hand? Oh, yeah, of course. But, I mean, like, there are some really big fucking problems going on if, if that were to happen, right? There's, like, some weird fucking shit going on. For them to lose CLG, I think, is indicative of some kind of crazy internal shit. And it's not just, like... Because, like, in any in any sane world, I mean, maybe you guys know better than I, can you see Azubu letting go of CLG? I feel like that's one of the accounts that you would pull all the strings possible to yeah. keep. Yeah, you yeah. would never, ever, mm-hmm. ever lose that account if you could do anything within your power to prevent it from happening. So the fact that they not only lost them, they lost them to somebody that they've actually avoided in the past. Like, the, CLG never went to Twitch. They, they went from own, they stuck with own until the fiery fucking end, and then they went over to Azubu, and now they're finally on Twitch. I, I mean, I don't know, I feel like there's like some crazy internal shit, financial shit going on to actually drive CLG away from them, and I feel like people, other people are going to begin to follow suit. Well, like Cody was uh, pointing out... For those so- that are tuned in as well, sorry Chris, sorry. Um, we, we should point out the fact that we're still talking about Klaus. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, so you should rename this. This should be Unclouded Fifty Five, not Unfiltered. Maybe the uh, maybe the same, maybe the same thing. If you would have followed these problems all the way back up and then go on like a different ladder and then go all the way back down, maybe you end up back at ESG and maybe all the problems would be traced. Well, back that's that's stuff. kind of what I was alluding to. It's just that <laughs> yeah. you know, this just seems un- it seems odd that there are simultaneous things going on and they're all funded from the same <clears throat> area. Does, it, the weir- does that the cause weir- concern for other people in, within that? You yeah, know, within that conundrum of the yeah. weird thing though is that of all the things there, there were like the three big things that Cl- that Klauf has, and it was like the gem shit, the ESGN shit, and then Azubu, and it was like okay, gem and fucking um and ESGN or whatever they're what, what, whatever you want to call them, you can call them loss leaders, you can call them marketing, advertising, whatever the fuck. But Azubu, hey, they've got this, and this is actually like an established business model. They've got streams, they've got people watching, they're working on getting the advertising shit set up, but they've actually like got something there that's marketable, that has some real value, right? ESGN might have had like a little bit of value, but it was way overhyped. They invested way too much money in it. They was never gonna fucking turn a profit on it. Gem is whatever the fuck Gem is, and then Azubu is like actually a streaming service that like hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of, of unique people tune in and watch. So like that's something that they can actually turn into something. But as soon as you see like Azubu start to fall apart, like if they if they can't make Azubu work, then that everything else like is an easy throw in the trash. Like there's no possible way that they could redeem themselves via like is Gem gonna be the the company that pulls Azubu up. Out of out of the lot, or is ESGN going to make enough money to keep Azubu? I mean, to like me, that's it... really weird that to, to see Azubu be, to see Azubu losing people and to see you know possible um, cloud funding pulled from Azubu when that was like their number one star player. That that's and, really uh, weird. Well, to me. well, to be fair, Gem Gem probably doesn't c- cost that much, <clears throat> anyways. Like I don't, yeah yeah sure. I sure, mean, sure. it's an agency. I mean, they they don't make any. They don't necessarily invest any money. I mean, they they basically yeah. just make off commission type of stuff. So. Um, that probably doesn't cost much to begin with. That's yes. my only point. I mean, it's a, it's just an agency model. If they're making yeah. if they're making someone else money, they're making money, and then yeah. But I mean, like right now in Azubu, I'm watching. There are uh, four of five League of Legends players from Curse streaming, and there are 
uh, at the lowest they have one person watching, and at the highest it looks like they have 38 people watching. Like, that's their spread. One to 38 people. What? It's true. Yeah. It's true. I yes. mean, I know at least in Hearthstone, like, you got guys that used to get, like, 5,000, 6,000 people watching them, and they got, like, 100 people watching them. Now. I just, I just I mean, linked it in... I mean, like that's there are, there are four live crap. streamers. Yeah, there it's... are four live streamers at the moment, and the spread is one. Oh yeah, but don't forget, guys. Those thirty-eight people, they 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 give them three times the CPM <laughs> that Twitch does. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nice. Remember all and and what else do we were that echoes of, of other shady deals in the past? Remember all the StarCraft two streamers that were starting to stream on Azuba because of the upfront cash or whatever bullshit they were promised and. Azuba are owned. It was on Azubu. Remember, like it was like a week ago, where like all these StarCraft two streamers oh, you mean, like, MVP. streaming on a, on Azubu. A yeah, of, MVP a lot of jump guys. The... Yeah, a lot of jump guys. But not all the gem streamers, or all the gem players are over on Azubu. No, all of them. No, for not. Mm -hmm. But I think that's interesting. Uh, and I haven't talked to Tumpa, <laughs> and for, but he's like someone is making these decisions. Someone is, in, you know, someone is pushing them one way or the other, and I think that's very interesting. Well, as far as I know, well, I don't know free, to, free to manage his um, clients the way he wants to, and if they don't want to stream on Azuba, then they don't have to stream. I don't think they're under any no, contractual obligations just because that. he's the agent. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 of course. But I mean, you know, who... Okay, so here's you. what I'm saying. If you're a gem employee, yeah. why would I ever want to stream on Azuba? And maybe it is the upfront money. Maybe he's like, hey, you know, especially with Korean StarCraft players, a lot of times those streams don't get watched a ton. Maybe you're just like, yo, this is, uh, you'll make it's... more money this year from the signing bonus than you would have made. That's your exactly the, that's yeah. exactly oh, yeah. their strategy, okay. yeah. right? I mean, yeah. there, there I saw, are I some so, enormous yeah. amounts. I mean, I was offered something too. I mean, there, there's, there's a lot. I mean, those, uh, those signing bonuses were huge. So um, it's supposed give to make up for the fact. Give us a ballpark. Give us a ballpark. I'm not giving you a ballpark. Below 10? <clears throat> I'm not Below giving 10? you a ballpark. Ah, come on. But Four I'm just figures, telling you, I'm just telling you there are some people that I know that, figures, that have way seven. more popular streams than me that, are, that were offered enormous, enormous amounts of money. We need Joe yeah. Interzone Edwards on the case. Joe, <laughs> you're out there listening. The next, I no, no. Some of these numbers. Exactly. The oh, next, but, I, want, I do want to point out that the, the Tumba... For sure, it, like I think what Tumba did was just he would, you know, he would he would get these uh, potential offers, I guess, from from Azubu to his his clients, but he never made them join or anything like that. I mean, he's got plenty of clients that are on Twitch, so yeah, yeah. The, the, None of that. Trump's the writing Twitch. on the wall yeah, here is exactly. somebody needs to dig around. Somebody needs to dig around all the players that have been switching to Azubu and see if any of them have gotten any of those cash incentives paid out yet. Because I'm willing to bet that almost all of them, if if, if any, have, have gotten nothing. You know. Oh, wait. Gotten, oh, none of that incentive? Like, like, like I bet, I'm willing to bet a lot of that promised cash hasn't been paid out for all the people that MC, um, it was well, MVP, probably MC, paid month and SD, month. And I'm, Bomber. I'm assuming it would be paid month to month, not like a one-time lump or anything like that. I bet none of it's been paid, though. I, I'm, I'm willing to bet. But, I mean, I could be wrong, but that would be an interesting story to find out of all the people that have switched due to cash incentives, how many of them have actually gotten any of those cash incentives paid out. Yeah. It's it's tough too for teams. So this is sort of an interesting thing, and I guess where experience could chime in. A big part of uh, what teams have pitched in the last couple of years have been uh, it's like you know uh, a lot hype does go a long way, but it's very easy to sort of add in your sales deck. Like hey, this this is the number of stream viewers we have, and then you sort of just become like an ad network. If you're on a Zubu and your fucking players are getting 38 views. You know, those those are harder to pitch to sponsors, so that actually makes more sense that, you know... Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that, that's hard all round on the play. I mean, you know, income-wise and uh, marketing-wise, team-wise, sponsor-wise, I mean, it's just not getting any exposure, so, you know, that 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 can't last. I mean, I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise not, me to see the curse guy switching over soon as well, if that's the case. It's not fun streaming to, like, 50 people. Guys. Well, no, I mean, I mean but quite apart from that, you're right, it's yeah. not fun streaming to 38, you, you know. And they have to stream, right? I mean, they're, they're forced to stream. Well, they're like, probably contractually quota. obliged to exactly. do the streaming. Yeah, most, most, teams, most teams will have quotas, yeah. 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 So, yeah, I'm curious to see if all the folks that leave Azubu to come back to Twitch, if, I mean, Twitch is obviously taking them in, but I wonder if their deals are, like, I was surprised worse. that... That is, Zubu didn't address this publicly, and they might have, but I might have missed it. But uh, one of their folks in upper management, uh, the guy who used to run Leakpedia, just he tweeted yesterday. I saw yeah. that he tweeted that it was a shame to see them go, but it wasn't addressed any further. 
you know, because that's a big that's a big blow. That's a it's, it's that's a knock on the chin for sure for Azubu losing uh, CLG. Yeah, absolutely. All right, any last thoughts before we take a break here? Uh, just I'm pretty sure that the guy that does the remixes of these will change the words <laughs> that we said earlier on. So I'm just going to make it easier for him because you know hey, he's going to edit it anyway, isn't he? I mean, we all said it was a shame that ESGN have gone down, and um, he'll change that to say, hey, we're really happy that ESGN died. Yeah, I've, I've just made it really easy for him. <laughs> oh, God. It was nice of you. It was very yeah. considerate. Yeah, it's very considerate. I'll, I'll let, I'll let uh, nice underscore underscore username know, know that. Okay, well, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with some more great topics. we got to talk NIP, League of Legends, and some Dota 2 stuff, too. All right, we'll be right back. 